This entire season, we've looked at empires, we've looked at beasts, we've looked at all these things in heaven and earth, and how does it end? Find out on this episode of Inverse. Hey guys, welcome to Inverse. Whether you've been tracking with us all season or this is your first episode, we want to welcome you to this entire season on Last Day Events. If this is indeed your first season, join our, our, our archives that we have on inverse.hopetv.org and you can, be, you can catch up on what we've talked about. So today is the last episode for the season, last episode. How does this all end? And have a word of prayer. Jared, if you can help us out, and we'll get into the text. Sure. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we need spiritual minds and your grace to understand your word, and we pray that you would help us to that end. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Siku, I think our starting text is at Matthew 24, verse 27. Verse 27. 24, 27. It reads, For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Amen. Israel, we, we're looking at a lot of different themes throughout the last days, and there's one thing that you find throughout Scripture. It's called the Day of the Lord. Can you give us an overview on what, what that's referencing? The Day of the Lord is referencing the return of Jesus, and as you look at it, especially in the Old Testament, it doesn't give a very, very pretty picture. It talks about destruction. It talks about yeah. the end of the world. It talks about all kingdoms crumbling down. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of like the theme that we find in the Old Testament as it talks about and anticipates Jesus' second coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many of you, to be honest, like you, you've been, this has been a, a rough, rough season. Yeah, I mean, or has it been encouraging and full of hope and exciting and then and, and you want to go through it and, and then this is this, yeah. You know. I've been encouraged by, by, okay. the, by the theme, last day events, especially for me, it's, it's kind of reshifted my approach to thinking about the last days. Growing up as a young Christian boy, I always felt I always put a lot of pressure on myself. Like, mm. am I going to have what it takes, you know, to be able to endure these last days? And 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 being able to study together has kind of helped me to think about the last days as as being center centered around Jesus and not around me. Mm -hmm. I've, I've enjoyed it. I Secret? found it very solemn. Solemn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just Is that good solemn or bad solemn or neutral solemn. I think neutral, it's, I think it's become a. a good solemn mm -hmm. in that um, you know there there's a sense of uh, urgency you know to the way that I live my life right now mm -hmm. you know so solemn in terms of you know thinking about how I spend my time you mm -hmm. know how do I um, interact on social media what do mm -hmm. I spend my extra moments oh, come on, on now I mean there's convictions <laughs> there, you know? yeah but it's, it's been solemn in that sense yeah encouraging in the sense that um, when I think about those things, I feel like I don't know if I can focus on the right things all the time, mm -hmm. right? But the encouragement is that if I can focus on Christ, like He's the one who will help me to mm -hmm. do what I need to do. Like the focus really needs to be a relationship on, mm -hmm. with Jesus, and that is what's going to help mm -hmm. me through these yeah. times. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciated the, the three of your comments, and then uh, our other brother Sebastian, other sister Callie. It's it's been a very Christocentric emphasis on the last day events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've always, you know, growing up and, and reading Daniel and Revelation, I, I I was freaked out without even me being freaked out about last day events, and I would I don't know I probably shared this before about I think thinking using my imagination the weird weird creative brain that I have is on how to torture God's people you know yeah. and mm. yeah. throwing me in a dishwasher or reading about Viet not Vietnamese or the, the, the Vietnamese War Vietnam War yeah. and how they treated their MIAs mm. or um, I would even watch like how long can I hold my breath underwater so You're that I can preparing. survive. I was preparing for the end. I, I felt like that was really <laughs> last day events preparation. Right. And uh, I remember watching like magic tricks um, and like, these guys going underneath water and like, well, I can, I can out, out can, I can out, out, outlast. Uh, outlast them, <laughs> and I never could. Yeah. But what what I'm getting a composite picture from all of you is get centered in Jesus, and it'll be okay. 
Yeah. 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 I mean, I feel he like is that the theme is, of the last days. That, that, right. That's not a simplistic right. overview, but it is, it is simple, but it's not meant to be simplistic. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2, and um, this is one of probably the easiest prophecies to understand, uh, an entry point, but we, we are looking at this last because it talks about the climax of history, if you will. Um, Daniel chapter 2, verse 34, um, 34 down to 35, um, and Jared, can you read that for us? Yeah. Uh, Daniel 2.34, you watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Can, Jerry, can you break that verse down a bit? Can you give us a rewind and kind of set us up to this climax here? Sure. Yeah. So, so Daniel's interpreting this dream where this, this kind of idol image composed of these different metals mm -hmm. represent this broad sweep of time, starting in Nebuchadnezzar's day, who represented the head of gold, yes. all the way down through the metals where you get down to this period where um, the old Roman Empire, which was kind of future point of reference for Daniel, is broken up into all these pieces. We would say that's where we're living today. Western mm -hmm. Europe is in this fragmented state, and although people have tried to bind it together, so Hitler Rome being, being iron, but then the iron and clay being this divided Rome. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's in, the, in those days, or we could say in these days, mm -hmm. where, where the, the, the nations of Europe are broken up into various pieces, they're fragmented, mm -hmm. that this stone comes back, mm -hmm. it strikes the image, all earthly kingdoms are broken down, and that stone, supernatural stone, cut out of a mountain without hands, fills the earth. This is a prophecy of the return of Jesus, and the setting up of his kingdom, which displaces all other earthly kingdoms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have it there in, in verse 44. Verse 44. Why don't you read that for us, yeah. verse 44. And in, the, <coughs> and in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Mm-hmm. So God is setting up a king. This is no longer an earthly kingdom. This is God setting up his kingdom, which does away, what Jared was saying, does away with mm -hmm. all these earthly kingdoms. The other kingdoms seem to be building up, up uh, on upon each, the, other. Uh, each other and transitioning into each right. other. But here you just have a reboot and refreshing of the entire, mm -hmm. you know, browser altogether. Right. Yeah, yeah right. okay. And yeah. The, the browser altogether component, it's it's important for us to stress that because yes. in verse 35, notice what it says 35. in the wording. Yes. It says, then the iron the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold were crushed together. Together. And so Jesus comes in the time of, you know, modern day Europe, the divided kingdom, and he doesn't just destroy that kingdom. He doesn't just destroy the, the iron mixed with clay, mm -hmm. but he destroys the bronze, the silver, and the gold. In other words, the whole reality of of, of, of that image is destroyed. And so when Jesus comes, it's not like he's just coming to set up a kingdom uh, and, to, uh, and to, to break down or to destroy the world as we know it now, but he's coming to kind of, history is coming in contact, it's clashing with eternity. So you're, you're doing away with a temporal reality and entering now into an eternal reality. Mm -hmm. And so I like there how it stresses, it's not just the, the feet that are destroyed, but it's the feet, it's, it's the whole the image whole that's destroyed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Should we, how should we react to this, to this prophecy? What is uh, some practical applications here? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Jesus is coming, so down with Europe. Like, I mean, what's, what, what, I know that's yeah. being stupid, but like, what's, what's our reaction to that? I mean, seeing Peter talks about, uh, in First Peter, he says, Peter. seeing then that these things shall be, what manner of persons ought you, to, ought you be? Right? So there's, there's a, a behavioral change that comes with a realization of the reality you're living in, right? Okay. So seeing that we're living in the time that is being prophesied here for Daniel, it was future for us, this is current, right? Yes. The very next thing that we're waiting for is for this stone that's cut out without human hand to come and, and crush this. Where ought my priorities to lie, right? Should I be investing to the most important thing to me be the, in this world, be temporal things? Yes, always God should always have been the most important thing throughout history, but what more 
now knowing that all of these things are just yeah. are, are on the on the we're on the precipice of all these things being destroyed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's there's an end Is to the reality as we know it and and in the in the very beginning when we first started our conversation on end time events we talked about the kingdom of god and the re and the government of god and how God establishes his kingdom through a seed. And so this is, it seems to me that this is what the whole of scripture is referring to. And he's saying, look, now is the time for us to plant the seed of heaven in our, in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds. Mm -hmm. And this is where the seed begins. The kingdom of God begins in the mind. And so what, what, what Daniel is telling King Nebuchadnezzar way in Daniel chapter two, and what all the scripture is telling us is, now is the time, understanding that the, the, the life that we live in now is temporal, now is the time during this temporal reality to prepare for an eternal reality. And so Colossians says, set your, effect, set your affections on things above, not on mm -hmm. things of the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, let there be a new mind in you. You know, if anyone be in Christ, be a new creature. Mm -hmm. All these ideas of preparing ourselves for heaven by renewing our mind, Romans chapter 12, this is what I think the theme of the Bible is telling us, that there is an end that is coming to the reality that we know it as. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's, that's sure. a heavy, heavy vibe. This, mm -hmm. this idea that the end is coming, this supernatural stone coming from outer space, it's Jesus, all of the earthly kingdoms are gonna be destroyed together. I mean, that's, that's serious business. And I think that we can see that and get a little bit freaked out sure. or there's if we're not careful then these other ideas can come in and and you get fear and and everything else with this apocalypticism but there's a verse that is super encouraging to me and it's found in Acts chapter 1 Acts okay? chapter 1 and it's referring essentially um, super encouraging status. to the day of the Lord yeah. right the, sec the the coming of Jesus but actually it's through the lens of after his three and a half year ministry, his death, his burial, his resurrection, okay? And we're getting to his um, ascension here. And he and his, his disciples are on the Mount of Olives. And, and it said basically in verse 9, when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men, these are angels who stood by them in wide apparel, who said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? These three words, this same Jesus, mm. right? This same Jesus who was taken up from heaven will come back down in the same way you saw him go into him. He went mm -hmm. up in a cloud, he's coming down in the cloud. But the emphasis that... Right, well, hold that thought. I'm going to hear the emphasis <laughs> of what he has to say caught him in the middle of a sentence where he will hear it on the other side of the break. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. I caught Jared before uh, was, his, his, his emphasis. So right you were talking about this this uh, verse of super encouraging stat in this category. Yeah. yeah, just th the fact that Jesus ascends, the angels come in, and they say, "What? What? why are you puzzled mm. looking up in the sky? And they say, this same Jesus. So when we're talking about the stone coming back that's going to strike the earth, when we're talking about looking forward to the future, you know, it's it's the same Jesus who healed people, who, who, who gave the blind their sight back, who gave the paralytic strength back in his legs, who raised the dead, who gave his life for me that mm -hmm. I might have eternity with him. It's this same, this same Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. The return of Jesus is an act of mercy in a world that is basically trying to devour and destroy itself. We're mm -hmm. on this path of self-destruction mm -hmm. and Jesus says, I love you so much. I'm going to come back. I'm going to intervene. Okay. He allows by his grace, you know, and in his infinite wisdom, kind of sin to, to play out, to demonstrate mm -hmm. that, listen, this is not something that we're, we're going to yeah. want to ever touch and reopen and revisit again. Mm -hmm. But he comes back and he intervenes because he yeah. loves mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. mercy. No, it's this the second coming of Jesus. I mean, some people say, hey, I love Jesus. I believe Jesus is coming back. And on April 17th, 1999, Jesus came back into my heart. And that's yeah. the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. Is, that, are, is that okay to spiritualize this understanding of what I call 2JC? Yeah? Not okay. Yeah. Not okay. I think it's foolish. Okay. I think it's we'll go to Israel foolish. and then Siku, yeah? I think it's foolish to spiritualize the second coming of Jesus Christ. Why would we want to do that? Our struggle is real. Our suffering is real. And just as literal as our struggle and our, and our experience is, so literal is the second coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's coming to, as Jared so eloquently just said, he's coming to destroy all that. He's coming mm -hmm. to destroy suffering. You're saying if it's suffering. spiritual, then we're just stuck in yeah, this no, state no that we're answer. in yeah. forever. There's, if, if, it's, if it's spiritual, there's no literal answer to mm -hmm. our suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Siku? Plus the angel that Jerry just quoted in verse 11 of Acts chapter 1. Okay, back to verse 11. Um, yes, at the end of what he was saying, he says, he will so come in like manner. Mm. So if they the saw him way. going up spiritually, mm. then he would be coming back spiritually. But they literally saw, they were gazing up into the sky, mm -hmm. right? Um, also in First Thessalonians chapter 4. Well, before you go there, let me, okay. just, let me just emphasize what you were saying there. Yeah. It says verse 9, it, it says it multiple times. Mm -hmm. Now when he had spoken these things, while they were... Watched. While they watched. He was taken up. A cloud received him out of their sight. Out and their while sight. they looked steadfastly toward heaven, mm -hmm. he went up. Like this is going up, cloud, up. <laughs> like it's just yeah. emphasizing and over and over again. And while they looked in their sight, like this was something that was visible mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. Right? So the second coming of Jesus will be up in the sky. It'll be visible. It'll be real. This, the, 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 the same Jesus, the, the, the body. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you're going to go to First Thessalonians? Yes, I was going to I was gonna keep going with the senses. Okay. Right? The sensory experience of, of the return of Christ. Yes. In First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians. Always difficult to get there. Okay. Yeah, this Verse, is... This is like the loudest four. voice in, in the Bible right here. Right. So this in, isn't some secret. It is not a secret. Okay. Verse, it is in verse 16. Verse it 16. says the Lord himself. It's mm -hmm. almost like not any other Lord, but the Lord himself, the same Jesus. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like the Bible wants to emphasize that the Jesus we were talking about all throughout the Bible, this is the Jesus we're talking about, the Lord himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He will descend from heaven with a shout. Not with a whisper. A quiet whisper. No, mm -hmm. with a shout. Yes. With the voice of an archangel. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is loud, with the trumpet of God. It three, three reiterations of of the Loudness. audible nature, not just audible, but loudly mm -hmm. audible nature of the return of Christ, mm -hmm. and the dead. It'll not be a harp so loud here. That not a clarinet, but a, but a trumpet. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. In verse 17 here, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds mm -hmm. to meet the Lord on the ground, but in no, the in, in the air. Mm -hmm. Be facetious there, yeah. Okay. Any other insights on on the second coming of Christ? Is this something yeah. that only some people will see? Is this something that only the privileged will see? A rapture? I mean, there's a lot of theories yeah. when it comes to the second coming of Christ. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm just the the main scripture that you read is lightning shines forth from the east and flashes even to the west. West in Matthew chapter 24. I can remember as a kid, um, and I was born in in the mi middle of America in um, kind of the breadbasket or the plains, and you get these crazy thunderstorms that blow across through that area. And I can remember as a little boy, thunderstorms at night, which would you know shake the house and 
you've got your eyes closed, and even though your eyes are closed, and there's a window there, um, you're kind of enclosed in the house, your eyes are closed, the lightning flashes can be so bright that you can see them even when your eyes mm -hmm. are closed. This is not something that we're going to miss. The Bible says that every eye will see him, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is the great kind of culmination of history. Um, and it's, it, you know, I, I, to so be this, alive This ain't this quiet, moment. this ain't secret, this ain't, you know, spiritual. This is the real thing, it's a real, real event in history mm -hmm. where all of humanity will see. Let me ask you this question. You know, I mean, a lot of people who believe in the second coming of Christ, I mean, we want to believe this. But we see, there, I think there's a couple fears that yeah. come up as a result. One, we don't want to be that 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 old angry guy with a beard. Nothing wrong with, with beards. <laughs> What's um, up, bro? But they, they, I'm a happy you're going to call me out like that, dude? I'm a happy man hey, with a beard. They're angry now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they have those, you know, the signs, and they're on the street curb in the city, and they say, the end is near, and they, they look like a modern version of John the Baptist. It's kind of like you guys. Um, like, how, we don't want to be that person. Right? I want to be a modern version of John the Baptist. Uh, <laughs> but we don't great. want to be that crazy guy, I guess what right. we're saying. There is that yeah. fear. And then there's others who, you know, should we give up um, our education? Should we give up our kids for adoption, get divorced, go on top of a mountaintop and wear, wear robes and, and get into a, you know, Buddhist position and float up to, I mean, what, how, how do we live our lives with that reality? Yeah, is that a fair question to ask? Mm -hmm. is it is. I, if, if, we're, if we're serious about the soon coming of Jesus and and I, I keep on being drawn back to the comments that Jared mentioned about the mm -hmm. return. This is the returning of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the man that has done everything to save us, the man that we've fallen in love with. The love of God compels us mm -hmm. to make sure that as many people as possible are ready to meet them. I mean, it's a story, the most beautiful story ever told. And knowing the reality of the soon return of Christ is going to compel his people people that truly, truly love Christ to share this message with someone else. And this is what prevents someone from hiding, right? You mm -hmm. don't hide your light under a bushel, Jesus says. And so these teachings go very, very contrary to the teaching of Christ. The love of Jesus compels us to go forward and to share with others what is soon to take place. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have this desire, what is that indi indicative of? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the love of God that compels us. So mm -hmm. if we don't have the, the, the drive, then... That means we're missing. So we have all this knowledge, but yeah. we don't have that experience. And the then love, there's a yeah. huge dissonance that occurs because yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Well, how, how do we live? How do we give some practical things for, for young adults out there and, and, and people who think they're young adults out there? Yeah. I just want to point to, to um, Second Peter. Um, Second Peter? Yeah. Chapter 3. 3. Yep. Where he's talking about, you know, all of this, the world coming to an end, you know, um, Verse 7, the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Mm -hmm. And then he says in verse 9, and this speaks to Israel's point, this mm -hmm. is God's perspective on the end yeah. of all things. Mm -hmm. God says he is not slack concerning his promise, mm -hmm. right? His promise to come, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to us, word, towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God mm -hmm. In light of the end of all things, his perspective is, I want as many people to make it as possible. Mm -hmm. And if I have a relationship with him, this will be my desire as well. But Peter continues, um, the day of the Lord will come as a thief, right? Um, it's going to be a thief. If you're not expecting a thief, then you're going to be caught unawares. But mm -hmm. if you are, then you're going to be prepared. And then he says in verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Mm. Yeah. So the, the call is not to stop living, actually. He says the call is the way you conduct yourselves as you're living. So it's not that I should cease to be a student, but it's what type of student should I be? I shouldn't cease to be a mother, but what type of mother should I be? Mm. What type of, in, in our lives, the way that we conduct ourselves, what type of people ought we to be in the context of the imminence of Christ's return. Yeah. So no, I don't stop going to school. No, I don't give up my kids for adoption. No, you know, even relationship doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to have a boyfriend. 
but what kind of a relationship mm -hmm. am I going to be having mm -hmm. in the light of the fact that Jesus is coming soon? So some For people sure. use the second coming of Jesus as a form of escapism mm -hmm. and to get off, uh, get the responsibilities off of our shoulders. But what you're saying is here is, no, we embrace those responsibilities with holy conduct and fulfill them with excellence. Right, yeah. right. And, and God's grace has got to help us with that. Siku's yeah. observation reminds me of Enoch, and we know very little about this dude who lived in the Old Testament. He was the seventh from Adam. He was <laughs> taking care of his 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 business, and he 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 just God took him. Mm -hmm. Is what mm -hmm. the Bible says. He he walked with God, mm -hmm. right. and um, he wasn't an escapist. He was fulfilling his duties. He was taking care of his business, he but he father. was doing it in a way where he where he was walking with God. There was closeness there, and God just said. I, I, I want you to be with me. You're going to come with me. Mm. For, for me, that gives me encouragement because, yes, you know, we're faithful in our duties every day. And, you know, we can look to the future and say, how am I going to prepare for this? Mm -hmm. I think the, the best way to prepare for the second coming is to walk with Jesus right. today. Right. And if I'm right with Jesus today, I'm ready for Jesus to come today. That's, and that's, mm -hmm. that's a daily a experience, experience with him. That's mm -hmm. that's John 17 verse 1, right? This is life eternal. So we're looking forward to when this, when, when this is all over, we're going to go to heaven and live eternally. But this is life eternal to know God. Mm -hmm. And that's an experience that we begin to have right now and will continue throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. Verse mm -hmm. verse 14 of 2 Peter 3 says, to follow up what Sigu was saying, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent right. to be found by him in peace. And verse 18 says, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord. Mm -hmm. Our responsibility is to constantly be found by God in peace, growing constantly in grace. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think our responsibility is mm -hmm. in these last mm -hmm. days. For sure. Let's go to Titus chapter 2, which kind of, I, I love this phrase here, is the epitome of, of this My son's this name word. is Titus. Titus, mm -hmm. yes. Um, Good name. Good verse 11 of chapter 2, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, mm -hmm. looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that, we might, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous of good works. Speak Amen. these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. Amen. And now this is my prayer to have this blessed hope in all of us. The second coming should be the primary calibrated point of which we, 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 we adapt every aspect of our lives towards. In that sense, we should be looking for the second coming, the second advent of Jesus. We should be Adventistic. We should be Adventists when it comes to Jesus. Amen. That's my prayer. Prayer for everyone at this panel. Hopefully, all of you have that blessed hope. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching us. Uh, been with us this entire season. Join us next season as we look at Acts and the early church. God bless you guys.